Hey, Cleaning Nation, welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. We've got a special new and improved intro. For the first time in three years, we're doing an open to the public live event. It is limited to 12 amazing owners of cleaning companies that are doing six figures and want to do seven. You cannot sign up. You have to only get a call and see if you're a fit. But if you want info, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash live, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash live. If you would like info on hanging out with me, my bride, 11 other six figure entrepreneurs who want to do seven, and get the entire clean profit method to the best of my abilities in just about three days. GrowingCleaningCompany.com forward slash live. Hello, Cleaning Nation. Welcome to a podcast. I am Suzanne, one of the mindset coaches with Grow My Cleaning Company, and I have the pleasure right now to be working not only with elites, but our next level uh, members and clients. And... Don, I've had the pleasure of actually seeing Don through the Elite program, graduating and moving into the Next Level program. And Don, thank you very much for joining me as a guest today. My pleasure, Suzanne. And I'd like to add that the the pleasure is mine. Uh, it's been a treat to meet you, uh, to learn from you, and um, be a part of the program. Thank you. So let's get started because I want to share a snippet into your business and your life. And I'm hoping that that will be um, something that inspires other people and helps them recognize that they're not alone. All of our other peeps in Cleaning Nation. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the type of business you have and where you're located. Let's start with that. Sure. Uh, We we are commercial janitorial service, full commercial, no residential thought about it over the years, but uh, never decided and happy that we never decided, just kind of stick into the main thing. And we are in Southeastern Pennsylvania. Excellent. I love it. I love that you're focusing on one thing. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. So let's dive deep. Tell us your business goal. Why are you in the Next Level program and what do you plan to achieve with your business? Great question. I uh, give you a bit of a backstory. We love that. Was, was, uh, we are a family business, uh, originally started by my father back in 1981. So I was just a little guy and I used to tag along and uh, when there was no babysitter. And I got to learn what the business was at a very early age. Uh, so naturally, as the years progressed, I, uh, being Don Jr., I felt it was my obligation to follow in my dad's footsteps and continue uh, the work that he began. So uh, it's it's been great. And uh, the goal for me was to have been retired already. Uh, my goal was to build this thing up, find a, a nice buyer. We get offers all the time, uh, but we don't think we're there yet. And the goal for me now is to continue to expand and sell it to a buyer and not have to do much more than whatever I feel each day. That's great. So how much of an increase do you need to do to feel that it's ready to be sold? 10 times. Okay. So we have a little bit of work left to do. Yep. Yep. Perfect. And what are you going to do when you retire it? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in that position my entire life. So I'll have to figure out. Uh, I'll catch up on my reading. I'll catch up on my uh, extracurricular activities, which uh, I kind of narrow down to just uh, here and there when I can fit them in. And I'm sure I'll have a lot more fun. Okay. Well, a suggestion is yeah. actually plan what you want to do. Because that's going to help it happen and help it arrive faster. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Plan exactly what you and your beautiful wife are doing. Okay. So how about your greatest success in the business so far? Hmm. A lot of good questions here. Uh, one that I'll give you one that doesn't pertain to cleaning, I guess, and one that does pertain to cleaning and here in my backstory and knowing, uh, how I got where I am was because I was born into it. Uh, one of the greatest, uh, joys 
and uh, successes in life has been to hear my dad tell me how proud he is and congratulate me on doing things good. And uh, towards the business side of things, I have to say it was uh, over the past couple of years, increasing prices uh, and knowing that it needed to be done. It was fair. I wasn't gouging anybody. Uh, I was simply running a business the way that it needed to be run if it were to be a business and not a charity. And uh, it took me years and years and years to get there. Uh, folks, you and, and the other folks there certainly did help in that and um, kind of getting my business up a notch or two that I wasn't worried about payroll each time I had to run it uh, was, was, was comforting. And I, I count that as a great big success. Oh, that is a fabulous success. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Shout that from the rooftops. And I hope it goes in your gratitude journal every single day. <laughs> Because so often we get caught up in what we didn't do right. Mm -hmm. And right, what you just shared right there is something that you're doing right. And Mm -hmm. you did, and you can be proud of, and that's something that you did. So your dad has every right to say so proud of you. Yeah. Isn't that nice? It doesn't always, it doesn't always happen from parents, right? (laughs) Right, right. You're a lucky one. Okay. Gratitude for dad. Yes, yes. That's going in your list. Right, right. And I did pay for it because all the years when he worked with me, anything that went right was credit to dad. Anything at all that went wrong was that darn kid of his. So (laughs) I I think I earned it. (laughs) That's perfect. I'm so glad you shared that because it's so real. (laughs) It is, 100%. All right. So next question is, what do you feel is the biggest thing that holds you back when you decide you want to do something in your business or make a change and get to this end goal, being ready to sell the business? What's the biggest thing that holds you back? It has to be mindset, mind frame, however you want to put it. Uh, Mindset kind of that I've struggled with for a long time is that I have to have my hands in everything just about on everything for them to go the way that I want for them to work, uh, which would make it hard for me to take vacation, those kind of things and be away from the business. I'd be the guy who's always there no matter what, you know, I'm I'm there more than the the postal service who claims they never miss a day. I'm there more than them. And uh, so that's uh, having the mindset that I can have somebody do this task. I can have somebody do this thing on the computer. Uh, It's been eye-opening seeing other people, meeting other people who uh, are farther along than I am, have been in the same mindset and are working their way out of it uh, as I am. That's great. So how do you feel now that you are starting to delegate more? relieved uh, a bit bit less uneasy right because if if i had to be on top of everything it'd it'd be kind of tense and stressed so i guess the stress is on its way down trending downward and yeah yeah a bit more comforted to make it simple great Can I ask what thoughts are helping you make the change of letting go and not feeling like you have to be doing everything all the time? What thoughts are you using to help you release? Mm. The, and we're not talking about affirmations that I do or, or anything. Anything you want to share, because I'm sure we have a lot of listeners in the same position. I, In fact, I hear this a lot. I need to do everything, Suzanne. You don't understand. It, <laughs> I'm, I'm a control freak. I, I, it won't be done right without me. Yeah. I, this is important because my customers are important. What if it's done wrong? 
You sound like the old me. Yeah, you sound like the old me. So uh, <laughs> thanks for helping me. Uh, You're answer. welcome. I put you in the spot, right? That's the <laughs> yeah. feeling. How do you get out of that? Yeah, uh, little by little, one day at a time. And uh, with the realization that you're not a tree and you can change. And just because it's always been that way or you think it has to be that way doesn't mean that it's carved in stone and come down from the mountain. Uh, it's totally possible. We see it all over the world. We see it in every aspect of our lives that all these large companies, you know, we all think of, many of us think of McDonald's. They make that same cheeseburger over in Japan and they make that same cheeseburger down in Texas. And uh, same thing. It's not about, you know, Mr. McDonald, God rest his soul, is probably not even around anymore making all the burgers, but it's about having a way, having a road for your folks that work for you to follow uh, for them to produce the end result that you want. Hey, amazing people. You may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask I can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now back to the show. Wow. Didn't that sound powerful? I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> I think you just coached yourself, Don. <laughs> I want to rewatch this. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, you. Are, this is a writer downer when you said you are not a tree. But yeah. everything or or how did how did you say that? It wasn't that you're not a tree. What did you say? Yeah, yeah. You're not a tree. You can change. That's there you it. go. I, I can't go. claim credit. That's a Jim Rohn line. <laughs> I love it. It doesn't matter where we get our key points from. Right. The point is they stick in our head. That's so that's exactly it. I was going to say, so write that down, folks. But you know what? Everything you said after that was so important as well. Mm -hmm. That's like when that monkey gets in your head and you, your voice says, but I need to do it. Only I can do it. Then you say, hey, wait a minute. And you can just think about what you just said. I couldn't even repeat it as well as you just said. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure that is going to help you go far, this new mindset. And we're going to continue yeah. working on that and solidifying it and building that foundation of your business so that you soar. And then you can do whatever you want with that baby. Yes. Right. Beautiful. So I also wanted to ask you about this 300 things to do list. Okay, folks. Mm, okay. This, this is something that Don and I were recently chatting about on one of our calls. And I thought this could be helpful to all of you. So Don, tell us about this 300 things to do list, please. All right. Yes, we all have to do is we all have those boxes that we want to check off those things that we have to do today, tomorrow, next week. Um, I accumulated in, instead of a, a to do list, I had a more of a brain dump with over 300 to do's. And my most recent ones would be up near the top where they were most recently entered. And I was kind of stick, stick to that area of, uh, checking off the boxes. So I had a great suggestion from Suzanne to uh, kind of give this thing some, some framework, some purpose, uh, and help me with my direction and prioritization. And what we decided was to spend a couple hours and go through those 300 items, categorize them, and then prioritize them by category so that... I could make sure that things that were most important for me to get to where I want to go were being done uh, instead of being way, way down the list when I wrote them three months ago and, and just about forgotten about, even though they're, you know, air quotes on the list, but they're just so far down, not categorized, not where I need to see them uh, that I, I don't know that they exist. So thanks again for that, Suzanne. You're welcome. And you know what? We're going to dive even deeper into this okay. because yeah. this is this is just too rich. How many of us can relate 
to this great list of, oh, I have this great idea. Oh, I, and I should do this. And oh, I learned this. I listened to this podcast. I should do this. Right. <laughs> and before we know it, we've got a list of 300 things that we don't even want to look at the list anymore, <laughs> let alone know what to do. Right. It's, it's common. It's, you are not alone, Don. Good. Not my proudest you. moment. Glad to hear. But it's, <laughs> however, when, when we were discussing it, there was one particular list. And what did we call that? That was the list of things that are like, I'm going to do them way later, a wish list. Right. Later what on, did, our wish what list. What did we call that list? Let's do it later list. <laughs> someday. I think we call, I called it someday. Okay. <laughs> As if to just let me know clearly that, uh, don't worry about this right now. <laughs> that's that's the first teaching moment is for any of you that have a list of 300 things or even 100 things or even 50 things. That's overwhelming. You know you're not going to look at it. You know you don't know what to do. Take all the things that are future things. This would be a great idea to do in the future. Take all of those things and put it on a different list. <laughs> whether mm-hmm. you do a written list or whether you put it on your computer, Put them on a different list so you're not looking at them on a day-to-day basis thinking, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to sit on the couch and eat potato chips, (laughs) watch Netflix. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me that's not just me. (laughs) It's not just you. (laughs) So how do we ease that burden of I've got so much to do? There's so much on my list. We ease the burden by taking all the stuff that's, hey, this is a future great idea, put it on a different list. And I'm going to say, look at it maybe once a month, review it over coffee and say, hmm, is there anything I want to pull out right now to do on my more current? Or should these just wait a little longer as great ideas? And then mm-hmm. you take what's left from the list of 300. So right now, how many how many things on your list, Don, do you think you put over to, hmm, not now, later? How many things of the 300 went to the other list? Over 20. Just 20? Yeah. Just 20 on a list of 300? Over 20. I don't remember the exact number. Okay. That was at okay. least 20. So now, how are you organizing what's left? I'm almost done organizing, blah, 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 organizing them the way that we discussed. Uh, I did pull up the things that are top priority and put them in a bracket. And okay. You know, I have some clarity there and the, the the B, C, and D are a work in progress at this moment. Everything is a work in progress, Don. Yes. So that's perfectly yeah. fine. Yes. So again, a recommendation for you for everyone is really every day we can pick the top three things that are most important to do. But the rest has to wait for a future moment. Mm -hmm. So perhaps the one list is for longer, could be a year from now before you get to them. And then there's an interim list where these are, like you were saying, the ABC list. Mm -hmm. These are not as important to do right now, but these are definitely important. And a suggestion to break them down into the smallest steps possible. So hire a new person, maybe on the list, but in order to hire a new, new person, you have to make sure you've got a good ad. You've got to know where to place the ad. You've got to maybe spend money on the ad. got to set up for the interviews, right? There's a right. lot of steps in hire a new person. So you can't just say on my list tomorrow, I'm going to hire a new person. Does that work, Don? Right. No, it does not. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> not for you. <laughs> so break it down into the smaller steps. Three top things that I can do today, or best, do it when you finish your work day the day before. Make your list of the three top things I need to do tomorrow. And I always say do a business list and do a personal list because our lives are not just business, right? Mm -hmm. We have our families. We have priorities. And the reason we do our business is to serve our family life. So three top things that are are family related or personally related, three top things that are business related. And the rest is hopefully 
you'll work out maybe more than 20 that don't have to be done right away. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that list bigger. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll yeah. keep working next yeah. month. See you yeah. next month, Don. We'll discuss it more. <laughs> Right. Deal. deal. Um, and then we'll just get to the top things that are priority. So, how are you feeling now that you you started separating those things? Much better. Yeah, it was funny last night, just last night, and this morning. I remembered the three things that were were on my list for today. Yeah, I remembered it last night, and then getting ready this morning, I, I kind of like my gears were turning, and I was thinking about them, and you know, ready to get her done. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been helpful. It's been helpful. Thank you. Excellent. I'm hoping that that gives you more energy because when we look, when we look at a list that is too long, it saps our energy. Mm-hmm. This word like, I can Agreed. never get all of this done. We're already starting feeling like we're under the eight ball. Mm-hmm. And when you are able to look at a shorter list, you get excited and say, I can do this. Yeah, totally. Totally. Three things. Boom. You can do them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, Don, is there anything else you'd like to share before we close out this podcast? Hmm. Wow. A big thank you to you, all the, the, the rest of the team, Mike. And uh, no, just keep doing what you guys are doing. I like it. I like the other folks who are uh, part of the group. And um, it's it's been a treat. So, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Well, it's a treat for us working with you and serving you. And thank you for being our guest today. I'm sure that was one of your minor things on your to-do list. Now you can check it off. Done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Done. Done. Thank you again, everybody. Cleaning Nation, please take note. Mike has done a bazillion videos, podcasts to serve you and your business. Have a look. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. We have all kinds of things to serve you and your desire to bring your business to the best it can be. And again, Don, thank you so much for joining us. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now, 602-932-6431. Give me a text, say hey, can't wait to meet you.